this is a reforged reaction and today i'll be reacting to an article by the gamer.com by jade king entitled for spoken preview excellent combat held back by a terrible personality if you like this reaction content be sure to hit subscribe and the bell button and check out my live content over on reforge gaming one of the reasons i wanted to react to this is because I already did a piece of reaction content just about the protagonist, but we ended up not using it. Too much has come out about the game. It sort of felt like it wasn't going to be a great video, but this seems like it's going to touch on one of my primary concerns about the game. I haven't read it yet, so let's dive in. Forspoken is a fundamental evolution of everything Square Enix and Luminous Productions achieved with Final Fantasy XV. Pol- as polarizing as that game can be, It still managed to present a series of vast landscapes to explore with movement and combat that inspired players to experiment before venturing off the beaten path in new discoveries. Now I've saw I've seen a couple other articles that are comparing this game to Final Fantasy, so not surprising that you know Luminous made a Final Fantasy. It had potential, and one day I hope to see it fully realized. Forspoken does exactly that, but I fear these steps forward won't be enough to escape from its woefully corporate identity and fantasy world that inspires little more than annoyance. So the corporate uh, identity thing is actually a pretty good descriptor. Some people said that this game felt a lot like a technical test. It just sort of felt like it was jam-packed full of just almost me showing off the engine, and there were people concerned about that. Others were concerned about the protagonist that they're about to talk about. Frey Holland is an irksome heroine with a bitter personality playing on the worst kind of youthful tropes, depicted as a bad girl who got mixed up with some bad people and thus must be rough and guarded in ways that only the most distant boomers would view to be resonant. It isn't, and even in a preview designed to ignore the narrative entirely, I couldn't help but cringe my way all the way through. This is not surprising. Many people have defended the character and some of her lines and some of the way that it's written in the previews and in the trailers. And one of the things that I continue to say was there are other ways to make her stand out. There are other ways to make her feel out of place. You don't have to have her talking almost disconnected. She feels aloof. She feels overly sarcastic as if she's not really reacting to the insanity of the situation. And I don't think you can defend that by being like, well, she's guarded and she's had a rough life. That feels so driven by stereotypes and cliches that it's going to make it really hard to connect with the character. One of the reasons characters like Aloy in Horizon Forbidden West work so well is you really connect with her. One of the articles I read that we actually did a reaction to that we didn't put in this compared her to Aloy as being an outcast, and that's why she's different or maybe hard to relate to. I didn't think that they made that mistake with Aloy. I did think she had some personality quirks and some things that she did in conversation, that made sense because she was an outcast, but it wasn't done in a poor way. It was written well and voice acted very well by Ashley Birch. Let's continue. My preview took place in the illustrious region of Aviolette as I clambered across its mixture of foreboding swamplands, floating islands, and abandoned ruins. This world was once bustling with life, and it seems Forspoken is easier, eager to showcase it and in a state of disrepair. I only ever stumbled across the occasional smattering of wildlife and all manner of creatures corrupted by the blight, which is what the game calls its generic evil energy that has brought... Excuse me. That has brought the realm to of uh, Athea to its knees. Super evil energy is doing super evil things, and we have super cool powers and a super cool destiny. That means we are only a super cool person capable of saving the world. We've seen it all before, and so far, Forspoken isn't breaking new ground. Now, obviously, they're being a little sarcastic and a little, you know, redundant here to belabor the point. And I don't have a problem with this because. Number one, I I think this is a common thing in games these days. You're just sort of telling the the cliche, silly, chosen one story where you're the one that's got to save everything and you have these awesome powers. As long as the gameplay loop and the content loop is good, I think people are willing to look past stories that tend to be overdone, overbaked, or done before. The challenge will be, I think, in a game like this, 
is you kind of need to connect to the character to care about what's going on. And that takes place with Aloy in Horizon Forbidden West. I'm going to keep referencing back to that. You care about her and the story and the characters that she interacts with because they're done so well. You're, you're concerned about friendships and, and strained relationships and, and people that are risking their lives to help you. Similar in uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Similar things happen with those conversations. So not caring about her, being annoyed by her, or feeling like the story is very generic is going to hurt, I think, the experience for some people. Uh, Once the tutorial is over, I'm encouraged to follow a linear sequence of objectives to reach my goal, which involve clearing areas of enemies or hunting down specific collectibles that fuel Frey's eventual progression. This demo isn't a real part of the game. Instead, it's designed for filthy game journalists like me to take it for a spin without the burden of storytelling and characters. From a purely mechanical perspective, Forspoken is already a treat to play. None of this is surprising. Uh, I've reacted to the gameplay myself and essentially said, listen, everything looks amazing. Traversal looks fun. Combat may be a little grindy. I did point that out. Even the most minimal enemies seem to take a really long time to die. There doesn't seem to be a great difference of hierarchy between what we would call like a trash ad or trash mobs and the more major enemies or mini bosses. So I'll be interested to see how that plays out. But from everything we've seen, it looks like a lot of fun to just traverse the world. You have a selection of different spell sets to choose from, each one sorting several accompanying abilities designed to be combined in a seemingly limitless number of ways. Some attacks can bind enemies to the spot with an explosive of vines, while I can then switch to a fire focus spell before watching them erupt in a flurry of crimson embers. Everything about it feels crunchy, satisfying in how Frey leaps through the air and lays the smack down on opponents ranging from zombified citizens to towering albino crocodiles enemy diversity I think is always key in these games so it doesn't get too repetitive using the generic melee and range attacks is certainly effective but it turns combat into a predictable slog that results in diminishing returns as you stand there repeating the same tired cycle of commands until the day is won. Forspoken encourages you to experiment and is infinitely more fun when you embrace that approach and do your best to mix things up. I was thrown into the game with a character who was already outfitted with equipment from much later in the story and didn't have the time to dive into exactly what each part of my arsenal meant and how the resources I kept earning in battle would factor into the overall experience. There is a lot of potential depth here and most of it is stylishly executed. I'm not going to hold that against the vertical slice that they were able to play. Uh, That's difficult sometimes. If you've not eased your way into a character and slowly tried out all the different abilities and powers, it's kind of tough. You feel like you're getting thrown into the deep end of the pool and drinking from a fire hose all at the same time. So I, I'm not, I'm not, that doesn't concern me about the game's depth a- and combat. Frey can equip new capes, nails, and accessories designed to provide welcome buffs to a certain playstyles and abilities such as elemental bonuses or rewards for approaching battles in a certain way. It's loot-driven, a decidedly Western influence from a JRPG that takes so much inspiration from the likes of Final Fantasy, but it somehow works, and I can totally see myself combing through it all and searching for optional activities away from the main quest, if only to scrounge up random loot and clean up icons across an environment that adopts many of the design tenets we've come to expect from today's open-world games. This was something I praised in Spider-Man, going out and doing the activities, earning the currency and the points from the different things in the city is a great way to make yourself stronger and to invest in tech and it seems like they're going to be doing similar things with loot based bonuses in Forspoken I really like the I don't like the UI but I like the nail system and the capes and the different things you can get from those I'm looking forward to seeing just how much you can tweak your build uh, by finding the right loot There are a number of landmarks that Frey can ascend before scanning the environment for points of interest. Such things will be marked on your map, and then comes the freedom to tackle everything at your leisure. It's all very Assassin's Creed or Far Cry, but in the context of a JRPG, with a more developed combat system and quirkier setting, it somehow manages to feel a little more fresh that's encouraging. That doesn't make it compelling, but there remains a gorgeous mystique to Forspoken's world, even in this small sample, that I hope carries over to the full experience. Athea is a broken place that only a smattering of humanity still calls home, and Square Enix would be foolish not to lean into that potential as part of the wider narrative. This is all encouraging, that that, that the world feels good, that going and moving around 
you know, makes it feel like some place that you want to spend time. But the question is here, will it? From the smattering of dialogue and general attitude found in this preview, I almost want to distance myself from Forspoken and never touch it again. Yikes. It positively reeks of older writers trying to create a character they believe is independent, cool, and more than capable of standing up for themselves. Frey Holland is all of those things, but this personality is depicted through irksome comments in the middle of combat and an incongruous use of curse words and insults that have no place in a world like Athea. I don't have any problem with curse words, but I remember the intro to Outriders having a similar... It's almost like you feel like some kid watched... A, a Quentin Tarantino movie and thinks ooh swearing is cool let's make the characters swear a lot like swearing doesn't bother me I don't swear in my content and I definitely don't appreciate when suddenly a game sounds like you know uh, the script from Pulp Fiction but I do think sometimes even for those of us that don't care or people that love to swear a lot it just ends up sounding really cheesy so I'm not saying a fish out of water scenario like this can't work it has countless times before, but Forspoken is doing nothing new with it and leaning into tired cliches wherever possible. Its Whedon-esque dialogue has already become a meme on the internet, and this reputation feels well and truly deserved. So, the quirky humor attempts and the irreverence and the joking is probably not appreciated. This was something that I highlighted from the trailers. It's like I said, she sounds aloof it's like she doesn't care everything's sort of silly and irreverent and a joke and she's sarcastic and it doesn't sound like it translates into a good character according to this preview the majority of battles are filled with repetitive voice lines ending and beginning with a foul comment or use of the f word purely because we need to know how edgy badass Frey is for surviving in this harsh fantasy landscape I haven't even seen the full context of the story yet but the general cadence of combat and how our heroine interacts with the world as we explore it already tells me a lot about how it will come and play out this abrasive girl will come to learn some harsh lessons about responsibility as she is tasked with saving Athea from certain destruction but won't lose sight of her true self in the process this first section sounds truly terrible the majority of battles are filled um, (laughs) with repetitive voice lines ending and beginning with the foul comment or use of the F word purely because we need to know how edgy she is that sounds awful This was something that I always talked about in Borderlands. Uh, The use of one-liners and certain characters that make for great playable characters. And this is why I never wanted Tiny Tina to be a playable character because she's funny in small doses and hearing her say over and over again, you're like, yeah, baby! Like her saying that over and over would become annoying. This sounds even worse because the voice actor is not even that great in my opinion. I'm already struggling to care, and so much of Forspoken feels like it's cobbled together in a boardroom filled with executives who have no idea what younger audiences want or how to properly represent them with a heroine who is capable of being so much more. This is a pretty strong indictment. I mean, this this does not sound uh, good. Games like this, the character has to be super likable, and it sounds like they've not pulled that off. At least she has a hip-hoppy walk, I suppose. Oof. Why'd you write that? Uh, And a British bangle who barks out tutorials and acts as polite foil to her brash exterior that we've also seen millions of times before in the past. Square Enix wants to make Forspoken an adventure that appeals to a global audience, but in doing so, it can't help itself from becoming so damn predictable. I don't really understand what this is supposed to mean. Uh, That's that's just an odd, a hip-hoppy walk i'm leaving that one on the author i have no comment parkour is rad at least and reminds me of sunset overdrive by holding down the circle button frey is able to propel herself forward as she darts across the environment and climbs whatever obstacles happen to get in her way sadly there is a real sense of automation to the mechanic and it doesn't feel like we are controlling our heroine so much as guiding her on a fairly strict railroad now i will say that Sunset Overdrive being referenced here really concerns me because I felt the same way in Sunset Overdrive. It was awesome. It was super creative. It was pretty. But being sort of restricted to certain movement types the whole time 
it started to feel a little bit too much like I was playing a Tony Hawk kind of skating game that also was sort of a fighting game. Now, there are people that love Sunset Overdrive, so this might sound great to them, but to me, that's worrisome. Because for a big open world to feel like this, to end up feeling like it's on rails, it's sort of automated, that's concerning because then it starts to feel like you're not doing it, you're not having this volitional freedom and flourishes the way that you might feel with Spider-Man swinging through the city. It's worrisome. Vertical structures such as larger towers and bridges provide an opportunity to test your platforming prowess while utilizing parkour in combat is an effective alternative to dodging, but the largely flat topography makes it feel like a glorified sprint mechanic more often than not. It's too early to judge though, and I didn't have nearly enough time to master traversal and make it my own. I also kept hitting invisible walls courtesy of the demo conditions, so it was far from ideal when it came to a truly spreading my game wings so that's not really a complaint you were in demo I'm conflicted about Forspoken it's combat is great it's parkour is parkour is mostly satisfying and there is so much across the open world I'm eager to uncover this is the one reason that people are probably holding out I think I'm gonna plan on reacting to skill ups video later on we don't like to react to videos right after they come out so we're gonna kick that one a couple of days from now but He says he's not sold yet, but he's interested. That's kind of what this sounds like, right? A general theme emerging here. There's good things here, but I kind of don't know. And this is sounding very similar. All this builds upon the foundation of a narrative and characters that so far I have nothing but derision for. The writing isn't good. There's no beating around the bush about it. Even when I put aside the cringy dialogue, it is teasing... It is teasing a fish out of water storyline we've seen explored for decades now. And it's misplaced assumptions about modern youth and what it means to be cool and rebellious in spite of your own existence is misplaced at best. And downright disrespectful at worst. It is a focus-tested homunculus, what in the world, of a game nobody asked for or even wanted to make. I like homunculus. I like that word. I'm probably not saying it right. I have to I have to add that word to my vocabulary. That's a great one. Square Enix has felt increasingly out of touch for years and I fear Forspoken could be its biggest misstep yet if it all falls apart. I pray it doesn't or I'll just play it with the volume down. We turn the sound down on and we said rude things. I, that's what it feels like here. People are just going to sort of meme and disrespect the main character. Not a good look here. There's a lot of Forspoken previews out there, and this one from the gamer is not sounding good. It's, it's sort of solidifying and reemphasizing things that I was concerned about from the initial trailers and from everything I've seen. So let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, if you like this reaction content, hit subscribe and the bell button. Check out Reforge Gaming where I stream live, and I'll see you in the next Reforge Reaction.